So we're going to start with uh, analytic geometry, and we're going to start with uh, four basic geometric figures, a point, a line, parabola, and a uh, circle. So uh, we can draw these. Here's a point, here's a line, here's a parabola, and there is a circle. And what we can do is we can put these into the Cartesian plane by drawing an x and uh, y axis. So we can draw uh, y and an x axis here. And we, then we call this the Cartesian plane. And this might be the point, let's say, uh, let's call this a point uh, 2 comma uh, 3. And we could put a Cartesian plane here. And we can put a Cartesian plane here. And we can put a Cartesian plane right here. And when we do this, right, these are all x and y axes. When we do this, we can start giving these sort of names, like I named this point uh, 2, 3, which means go over 2, so 1, 2, and then up 3, so 1, 2, uh, 3. Here we can name this black line. It might be the line, give it a formula, y equals, let's say, maybe 3x. And we could name this parab parabola here as y equals x squared. That's a line, I guess we should draw arrows. And we could even name this circle, maybe x squared plus y squared equals 1. Right, so so besides just having these little figures, we can actually now write down uh, expressions for them, almost like uh, a language. And these different expressions tell us different things uh, about the figures. Like we'll learn that this is always a line. This in this form will always be a parabola, and this form will always be a circle. So we'll learn that if you have y equals mx plus b, that always represents a, a line, whereas if you have y equals to some number times x squared plus another number times x plus some other number, that's always going to be a parabola. Uh, whereas over here, if you have x minus some number quantity squared plus y minus some number quantity squared equal to some other number squared, that will always represent a circle with center, let's call this k, h comma k. And we'll talk about uh, these four types uh, today. So let's start here with the uh, Cartesian plane. And down here, we can, what we can do is we can do an example using the Cartesian plane, and we can plot uh, the following points. So hopefully this is just review. So if I want to plot the point 8, 0, the idea is that the 8 is the x stuff, and the 0 is the y stuff. So it says basically go over 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then go up 0. So right here is the point 8 comma 0. The next one, 2 comma 5 says go over 2 and up 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So over 2, up 5. So this is the point 2 comma 5. And then the negative, the next point, negative 5 comma 2 says instead of going to the right 5, you go to the left because it's negative. So negative 5 means go to the left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and this would be negative 5 right here. And then it says go up 2, so 1, 2. So this is the point negative 5 comma 2. And then the final one, negative 3 comma negative 1 means go to the left 3, so 1, 2, 3, and then go down negative 1. So that's this point right there. So this is the point negative 3 comma negative 1. And so that's how we work in what's called uh, the Cartesian plane. It's called the Cartesian plane because it's named after a f uh, French uh, philosopher, uh, René Descartes. You're probably more familiar with him for his saying, I think, therefore I uh, am. But you can see in his name, Cartes is why we call this the Cartesian plane. He's the person responsible uh, for popular popularizing this uh, technique. All right, let's look at another example where we're going to have to try to find the distance between two points. So how do we find the distance between uh, these two points right here? And so let's give it a name. Let's call it uh, D. And so to find this distance, what we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the Pythagorean Theorem.
And the idea behind the Pythagorean theorem, it says basically if you're given a right triangle, so here's my right triangle, with sides or legs A and B and a hypotenuse C, then we know that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And basically, if I know A and B, then I can solve for C by taking the square root of both sides. So C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. And if you look in this picture, you can make a uh, right triangle. So here's my right triangle. And so all I need to figure out is the distance from here to here and here to there. And the way that works is you just subtract the x-coordinates down here. So I'm going to take 2 minus a negative 3. That's going to give me the distance down here, which is equal to uh, 2 minus a negative is 2 plus. So I get 2 plus 3, which is 5. And then over here, I can take 5 minus a negative 1. And again, a, negative, a minus a negative is a positive, so I get positive 6. And it turns out then d is going to equal the square root of this side squared, so 5 squared, plus this side squared, so plus 6 squared which equals the square root of 25 plus 36, which equals the square root of what, 64? No, not 64, 50 plus 11, 61. And so that's my answer for D, that's the distance. There is a general formula for this, so real quickly, let's jot this down so you can have it in your notes. So the general formula for the distance between two points, and let's just name them uh, x sub 1, comma y sub 1, and x sub 2, comma y sub 2. Right, so d would equal the square root of the difference between the x's plus the differences between the y's. So uh, x2 sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. Now I'm sure you probably have this formula memorized or you have had it memorized at one time, but the significance of it is that it simply comes from this Pythagorean theorem. And that's what I want you to kind of pay attention to here. It simply comes from this simple statement that if you have a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared is equal to uh, c squared. A lot of uh, interesting work was done in the 1900s having to do with this relationship right here. Uh, when this equality doesn't hold, you get a different type of uh, geometry. So if you're working in uh, geometry where your right triangles uh, don't satisfy this Pythagorean theorem, but satisfy perhaps an inequality like less than c squared or greater than c squared, you get rise to what are called uh, non-Euclidean uh, geometries. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to do next. So next thing I want to talk about uh, are lines. And so when we talk about lines, there's basically two formulas. Right, so we want to talk about this. And there are basically two formulas. Uh, one is called uh, slope, the slope intercept form. And the second formula is called the slope point form. And if you want, you could call it slope intercept formula or slope point formula, but they're both important. A slope intercept form is what you learned probably in high school, and it looks like this, y equals mx plus b. And it's nice because if you have um, a line like y equals 2x, uh, plus, uh, let's say, 3, then I immediately know that the slope is 2 because m represents the slope. And the y-intercept is 3. So b is the y-intercept. So when I go to graph this thing, if you want to graph it, it's real simple to do. All you need to do is find the y-intercept, which happens on the y-axis, because it's called the y-intercept. So you go up 3, so 1, 2, 3. So there's the y-intercept. And the line has slope 2, uh, which means you go over 1. So go over 1, 
and up two. And that's where the next point will occur. And you simply connect the dots. Right, so make sure you understand you know, what slope is. Right, so I always like to do this little diagram here. So if I'm going to talk about slope, there are all kinds of different lines. So here's one type of line. Here's another type of line. And here's an even steeper line. And you could also go down, so slope downward, like that. And these have different slopes. If you have no slope, then my m is going to be equal to, well, what do you think? No slope means, hopefully you say 0. And if you have positive slope, meaning you're going up, this is m equals 1, let's say. And if you're going up really a lot, let's say, uh, m is equal to a big number, like 100. Whereas if you're going down, instead of being positive, it's going to be negative, so maybe it's like negative 1 going down like that. If it's going down a lot, then uh, it might be like negative 100. So first, hopefully you have some uh, intuitive idea of what slope is. I mean, we use the word the slope of a roof, the slope of a road, uh, and then you can connect it uh, to the formula for a, a line. The second formula is a little bit more abstract, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And again, uh, the slope is m, and then x1, y1 is some point on the line. So let's just put a point here. So here's my x sub 1, uh, y sub 1. It's just a point on the line. So the idea is if you give me the point and the slope, then I can find the equation of the line using slope point form. Whereas if you give me the slope and the y-intercept, I can tell you uh, what the equation of line is too. Let's take a look at an example. And first let's concentrate on the slope. And so we want to find the slope of the line that goes through uh, these two points, 311 and negative 1, 3. So the first thing I want to do is just plot the points. And I don't have to draw out each little hash mark. Just put it in the right, the right quadrant. There's four quadrants, right? Quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's how we label them. And 311 is in the first quadrant, so it's probably someplace kind of up here, let's say. So this is 3, comma 11. And negative 1, 3, eh, let's put it right here. So this is about negative 1, 3. The important thing to notice is when you connect the dots, the line is going up. So is the slope going to be positive or negative? Hopefully you say positive, because when a line is going up, you have positive slope, whereas when a line is going down, you have negative slope. And this will help you uh, from making mistakes. And so to find the slope m, there are all kinds of ways to remember this. In high school, I was taught it was the rise over the run. In this class, since it's not high school anymore, we'd like to be a little bit more sophisticated. And so you know, this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. So instead of calling it rise over run, we'll say it's the change in the y, so delta y over the change in the x, so delta x. So this is the Greek letter delta, which in this course means change in. In calculus, it always means the change in. And so to compute the change in the y, well, you're going from 3 to 11. So the change in the y is 11 minus 3, divided by the change in the x. We're going from negative 1 to 3. And so this would be then, yeah, let's do it like this. Let's color code it. And so the change in the x, I'm going from negative 1 to 3. And so I'd be. Uh, negative 1 to 3, so it would be 3 minus uh, negative 1. And so this is going to be equal to then, on top I have what, 11 minus 3, which is uh, 8, and on bottom I have 3 minus negative 1, which is 4, and so that's equal to 2. And what that means is if I go over 1, I go up 2. And that's the idea of a slope. Now if you had a slope negative 2, that means if you go over 1, instead of going up 2, you'd go down to. The next example, we're going to find the actual equation of a line. So <clears throat> here I give you the same points to save some time. So we have 311, so that was up here, so here's 3 comma 11, and negative 1, 3. And now we already found the slope of this line. So there's my line. And I already found the slope in the last problem, m to equal positive 2. <coughs> And now once I have the slope, I can choose either point and plug it into my slope point form. So y minus y1 
equals m times x minus x sub 1. And choose whichever point. I would probably choose this one, 3 to 11, because I don't like to work with negatives if I can help it. So what I have is y minus 11 equals, my slope was 2, so 2 times x minus 3. And so I get y minus 11 is equal to 2x minus 6, so I distribute the 2 through. And then I'm going to add 11 to both sides, so I get y equals 2x, and so when I add 11 to both sides, negative 6 plus 11 is plus 5. So this should be my answer. Now you can check it. I can check it by using the other point. So if I plug in negative 1, I better get out 3. So if x is negative 1, I get negative 2 plus 5, which is 3, so it checks. And I know that's the right answer. So it's really important that you practice using uh, the slope point form. A lot of times what students will do is they'll say, I'm comfortable with this y equals mx plus b. I know how to use it, so I'm going to stick with it. And the mistake you're making is that you're not going to learn anything new. And later on, this will become really a, a important. So if you know how to use y equals mx plus b form, great. But please try to learn new things. That's what we're here to do. If you decide not to learn new things, then you're not learning anything new. And there's really no point uh, in being here. Next thing we want to take a look at, right, so we talked about points in the Cartesian plane and how to calculate the distance between two points using the Pythagorean theorem. We talked about lines and the two types of formulas, y equals mx plus b, and then the point slope form. Hopefully you understand a little bit about slope intuitively, uh, which means if you have a line that's going up, it's positive slope, a line going down, negative slope, and then no slope means zero, slope is zero. and then third thing we want to talk about, the third geometric figure is parabolas. And so first, let's talk about the formula for a parabola. Uh, so parabolas do one of two things. Let's look over here. They either open up or they open down for us. And the formula looks like this. Let's just write y equals uh, a x squared plus bx plus c where a, b, and c are some sort of constant. So you can you know make y equal to, let's say, Oh, 2x squared, oh, plus 5x, and let's do minus 7. So that's a parabola. To figure out if a parabola opens up or opens down, it's actually really simple. All you have to do is look at this first coefficient, this a. If a is positive, it opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. So if it's less than 0, it opens down. One small little fact here, this symbol, what letter does it look like? Hopefully you say that symbol there looks like an L, and that's why it means less than. Right, so if that's less than, then that's greater than. That's how you tell if a parabola opens up uh, or if it opens down. Now when we work with parabolas a lot, a lot of times what we want to do is find uh, roots. So let's take a look at an example. So we want to use the listed technique to find the roots of this following parabola. And we want to factor it, use a quadratic formula, complete the square, and then finally graph it. So these are three different ways to find roots. Now when I say find roots, hopefully you know what that means. That means take this formula here and set it equal to zero. And so we're going to do this three different ways. And you should be familiar with each way. I'm trying to review it to help you uh, later on in this course. So uh, by factoring, what we would do is you take x squared minus 4x minus 12. To find the roots, you set it equal to 0. And now what we want to do is we want to factor this thing. So let me be clear here. Now here's a problem we're trying to solve. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. And these are three different ways to solve this problem. So first we're going to factor it. So the idea behind factoring is that you can rewrite this as x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something equal to 0. And what you need to figure out is the plus or minus somethings. And the way we do this is you look at this number here, 12. And you think of uh, factors of 12. And the first one that comes to my mind is 3 and 4, because 3 times 4 is 12. And you say to yourself, is there any way to add or subtract 3 and 4 and get this negative 4 out? And there's not. And so then you look for two different factors of 12. So if it wasn't 3 times 4, then my brain says 2 times 6. You say, is there any way to add or subtract 2 and 6 and get a negative 4? My brain says, yeah, I can take negative 6 
and add two to it. And that should work. So now you should check this to make sure it works. And the way I check it is I simply FOIL it out. All right, so I just take x times x and x times 2x. And so I get x squared plus 2x. And then negative 6 times x, so that's a minus 6x. And then a negative 6 times 2, which gives me a minus 12. And that is x squared minus 4x plus uh, minus 12. And so that, that checks. And so now what I know is I have two things. This times this equals 0. Well, if this times, let's say that, this times that equals 0, then I either know this is 0 or that is 0. So understand this idea. If you have two things, a times b equal to 0, either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0. And so now I basically have my answer for the roots of this equation. I have x minus 6 equals 0 or I have x plus 2 equals 0. Again, if this times that equals 0, either this is 0 or that is 0. And so I add 6 to both sides and get x equal to 6. I subtract 2 from both sides, so I get x equal to negative 2. So those are my two roots. You certainly can check your answer by plugging it back in up here. You can take 6 squared minus 4 times 6 minus 12, and you'll see that you certainly get 0. You can also plug in then negative 2 and take negative 2 quantity squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 12, and you should get back 0. So we can check this one. Negative 2 quantity squared is a positive 4. Uh, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and minus negative 8 is a positive 8. And then if you take away 12, you certainly do get 0. All right, and this one will check too. Now we want to use what's called the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So we still have x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equal to 0. I know the answer now should be 6 and negative 2, but I want to, again, I want to use this quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula says x is equal to uh, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So this is another way to do uh, the problem we just did above. And so all I need to do is identify a, b, and c. And now remember, my a, b, and c are these coefficients. So I have a squared plus bx plus c. And so my a is just equal to this coefficient here, which isn't written, but there's a 1 here. And then my b is this coefficient here, which is a negative 4. And then my c, which is this coefficient right here, which is a negative 12. And so this is equal to a minus a negative 4 is a positive 4, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, which is 16. And then minus 4 times a is 1 and c is negative 12. So let's just put 4 times 1 times negative 12. And all divided by 2 times a, so 2 times 1. And we've got to clean this up a little bit. So 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 plus and it's a plus because a minus and negative is a positive, and 4 times 12 is 48, all divided by 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root. 16 plus 48 should be 64, divided by 2, which is equal to 4 plus or minus. The square root of 64 is 8, all divided by 2. Now here's where you need to be careful. When you divide an addition or subtraction by 2, the 2 gives is given to both of these. So this is really 4 over 2 plus or minus 8 over 2. So that's really 2 plus or minus 4, which equals if you take the plus part, you get 6. Or if you take the minus part, you get negative 2. And those are my two answers again, just like I expected. You should know that most of the problems we do in here, it's not really the answers that matter. It's actually the process you go through to find these answers. So you should be able to do this technique by factoring. And you should also be able to do this technique by using a formula, the quadratic formula. And then the third method or technique is by completing the square. And this is the hardest one, so completing the square. But it's one of the most important ones because it's actually where the quadratic formula comes from. And so what you do 
is we say, okay, x squared minus 4x minus 12 is equal to 0. And in order to complete the square, you follow the saying, add half the middle term squared. If you do this, you always get the right answer. And so when I say the half the middle term, hopefully your brain says the middle term is this negative 4 right here, and half is 2, and if you square it, you get back 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x squared, and I have minus 4x, and I'm going to add half the middle term, so take half of negative 4, which is negative 2, and square it. So I'm going to add 4, and I'm also going to take it off right next to it and I have minus 12 equals 0. Oop, this is a 4. All right, so right here I just added 4 and I took away 4, so I haven't changed the equation of all, at all because if you add 4 and take away 4, you've really added nothing. Uh, so it's the same equation, but what I can do now is because this what the saying actually gives me, when you add half the middle term squared, is that this is going to be x plus or minus some number uh, squared. So what this is, is this going to be x, and it's actually going to be, when you f factor this, it's actually going to be minus 2 quantity squared with a minus 4 and minus 12 equal to 0. So right here, what I've highlighted in green is actually the same thing. And it, and it happens this way because of the same, add half the middle term uh, squared. And then when you do this, you can actually solve this equation. So what I have now is x minus 2 quantity squared minus uh, 4 minus 12 is a minus 16 is equal to 0. I can move over the 16 by adding it to both sides. So we have x minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 16. And take the square root of both sides, so I get x minus 2 is equal to, and then when you take the square root of 16, it's actually plus or minus 4. And then I get x equal to add 2 to both sides, so 2 plus or minus 4. And so x is equal to, if you take the plus, that's 6. And if you take the minus, that's negative 2. So you get 6 or negative 2, which is the same answer we had uh, before. Right, to understand why completing the square actually works, why do you have to add half uh, the middle term uh, squared? And if you think about this, if you have x minus a quantity squared and you foil this out, you multiply it out basically, you're going to get x squared minus 2a plus a squared. And this a squared, and this is going to take some thought on your part, right? this a squared is, oops, I forgot the x, 2ax. This a squared is exactly half the middle term squared. And so if you do this, you're always going to wind up completing a square and being able to solve uh, this uh, equation. And so make sure you can do this all uh, three ways. It's really important. And if you struggle with this, then you're going to struggle later on in the course. And what we can do right now is we can solve any sort of algebra uh, problems you have right now so later on uh, you don't struggle so much with it. Because if you start if you don't take care of this a problem right now, later on I guarantee you you're going to struggle immensely with some of the algebra we're going to, uh, uh, we're going to do. All right, the last thing I want to talk about are circles. So for a circle, what does the formula look like? So, the f so we have r squared, and let's start it like this, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals, that's a square, equals r squared. So now think about this formula and what it says, and hopefully it reminds you of something. Something squared plus something squared equals something squared. So think about in this lecture when I wrote down something squared plus something squared equals something squared, and hopefully you start to think the Pythagorean theorem, because what this is saying is h comma k is actually a point, so you have this point h comma k, it's the center of your circle really. And it's saying the distance uh, from the point x, y, no matter where x, y is, is always constant, it's always equal to r uh, squared. So suppose you had uh, x, let's say minus 2 quantity squared plus y 
minus uh, three quantity squared equals, and let's say five squared. And so what this means is that this is the center two comma three, and the points on it always fall a distance of five from the center. So that's my radius r. And so this is just really the Pythagorean theorem, or if you want, the distance formula. It's saying basically the distance from the center to any point is constant. And so let's take a look at an example of how we use this formula. So this one says find the center and the radius of the circle and then finally graph it. Oh, and that reminds me, I forgot uh, to finish off uh, this example up here. So let's come back here. So the final part was to graph this. So if you graph this, all you need to do is graph the roots really. So the roots were 6. So you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and negative 2, so 1, 2. And so you have negative 2 and 6 as your roots, and you know that it opens up. And if you plug in 0, you get out negative uh, 12. So if you want, you can just kind of do it somewhere just like through this and graph your uh, parabola. For the circle, let's go back now to this example I was about to start. Uh, you want to find the center and the radius of the circle. So the idea is you want to write it in this form, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equal to r squared, where remember h comma k is the center and r is the radius. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this method of completing the square, but we're not going to do it once. We're actually going to do it twice. And if we do this twice, we're going to wind up with wind up with this x minus some number squared plus y minus some number squared. And on the right hand side, we'll move all the numbers over to the right. We'll have something uh, squared over here. And so let's start. And so let's take a look at the first expression: x squared minus two x. So what I'm going to do is take x squared minus two x, and I'm going to add half the middle term squared. So the middle term is negative 2. If I divide it by 2, I get negative 1. If I square it, I get 1. So I'm going to add 1 and take away 1. And then I'm going to add. And the next term is y squared plus 4y. And I'll, again, I'll complete the square by adding half the middle term squared. So the middle term is 4. Half of it is 2. Squared, I get back 4. So I'll add 4 and take away 4. And it's still equal to 20. So I haven't changed the equation at all. I'm just manipulating the equations to put it in this form. Then I can read off the center of the circle and then tell you the radius too. And so what I have, because I added half the middle term squared, this should be a perfect square, and so should this. And so let's write it down. So this is going to be x. And because this is minus, it's going to be minus 1 quantity squared. And I have minus 1 plus and then I'm going to have y, and because that's plus, it's going to be plus 2 quantity squared minus 4, and then equal to 20. And then I'm going to move over the 1 and move for the 4, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides, basically. So x minus 1 quantity squared, then plus a y plus 2 quantity squared is equal to, so I'm adding 5 to both sides, because I move over the 1 and move over the 4, and I get 25. So now I know the center the center, my h comma k, is actually equal to, and so it's minus h, so it's just a, a 1 comma, and it's minus k. Now notice that's a plus, so what that's really, you can turn that into a minus a negative, and so this is really negative 2 is my k. And then my radius r, well r squared is 25, so r is equal to a positive 5. And so there's my center here. Here's my radius 5, and so then I can graph this. All right, so to graph this, it's real simple. I go up 1 and down 2, so let's just put it right here, 1, comma, negative 2. And then I'm going to draw a circle, and the circle is going to have radius 5. So let's just draw it like this. You can label it 5, and then everybody knows exactly what I sort of mean here. If you want to put more points on there, uh, you can, but this is good, uh, good enough. 
So real fast, let's hit this home one more time. So we talked about four basic geometric structures, points, lines, parabolas, and circles. And so hopefully you understand what the Cartesian plane is and how to find a point in it, in it how to find the distance between two points, and how the Pythagorean theorem tells us uh, how to find this distance. Hopefully you also know how to write down the formula of a line, so y equals mx plus b, or the point slope form, so y minus y1 equals m times x minus x sub 1, and how these work. Understand intuitively what slope means, so what is positive slope and negative slope and no slope. The formula for a parabola, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and how to find roots three different ways, by factoring, using the quadratic formula, and most importantly, finding, the complete, finding it with completing the square. This is really important. If you can't do this, this basically tells me that there's an issue with the way that you think algebraically. And all we need to do is work a little bit on this, and the rest of the course will be a lot simpler. Uh, surprisingly, students do not struggle with calculus. What students typically struggle in this course is with algebra. And so I need to make sure that you have a really solid foundation uh, in algebra. And then the rest of the course actually will follow uh, without too much uh, difficulty. And then finally circles. So for circles we have this formula x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to the radius squared. And remember the center is given by h comma k and of course the radius is just given by r. And so that's the formula. So understand you know if I write something down like x plus uh, 1 quantity squared plus uh, y minus 3 quantity squared equals 9, then the center is actually negative 1 comma 3, and the radius r, well what squared gives you 9? You say, well 3, r is equal to 3. 